Hey, good morning. Um, yesterday when we spoke, I, you know, we were yakking about <clears throat> the opening words to uh, the book of Romans. And I wanted to go back because Paul says, the opening words, it says, uh, Paul, a slave of Christ Jesus. And I'm quite sure that we need spiritually to explore what is this slave business? Why would Paul open it up to boast in it? Now, I'm not going to give you a definite answer on what this slave business is, but I'm going to show you that it's much more complicated, complex, intriguing, deep. Uh, it's something. It's something that we haven't even explored, and, and, and you are probably going to miss a big thing if you just gloss over it and run right on through and not even say, what is this slave of Christ Jesus thing? Paul, a slave of Christ Jesus, a called apostle, severed for the evangel of God. Now, <clears throat> Paul, in his opening line here, is just bragging about being a slave. And I can tell you, I personally have been a student of history for a long time, and I've spent a lot of time studying material from the American Civil War because I grew up in the South and I would you know I got a little hair up my butt about what the heck was going on in in this Civil War business and one of the most intriguing things I have read and digested uh, concerning the Civil War is Mary Chestnut's personal diary she wrote a diary I think it's called the diary of a Civil War officer's wife or something but her name was Mary Chestnut she was married to a civil a confederate officer and and she wrote a lot of stuff and you can see from her diary uh, you know pictures of the day-to-day -day life that was going on at the Civil War and one of the things that she pointed out upon occasion is that the slaves of the South were rather content in their their lot in life. In fact, she went to visit a plantation in one of the chapters of her book. She went to visit a plantation about three o'clock in the afternoon and the slaves were already going home out of the fields. They weren't even working past three o'clock in the afternoon. And uh, and there's a, there, there are several uh, occasions I have read where a given slave who belongs to, say, a fellow named John Smith, if you ask him who he is, he, say, he will say, I am John Smith's people. Now, isn't that striking? I am John Smith's people. So, <clears throat> is slavery bad? Well, we've been taught, you know, to, as a, in, our, in the political world of America, how god-awful slavery is, and they want to issue slavery reparations, <clears throat> and um, you know it's just it's politics they they've taken the slavery issue and made politics out of it but in the history of the world slavery has been a common occurrence and Paul is not afraid of calling himself a slave it's such a common occurrence that um, there were blacks who owned other blacks as slaves. And there were whites throughout history who were enslaved. In fact, a lot of uh, Slavic people were captured way back hundreds of years ago. And that's where the word slave came from because a large number of the slaves came from the Slavic people. Anyway, is slavery all bad? Well. I'm sure that there are some slaves who were miserable in that institution, just like there are some marriages that are miserable, and many marriages are wonderful. But so, you know, I'm sure that there were some instances, plenty of instances throughout the history in which the slaves were treated decently and the slaves were happy or content with their lot in life. And Paul even wrote a letter to Philemon, and I think Philemon was a slave, or at least one of his associates was a slave, and he tells these guys back then, you know, slaves behave yourself because even your master, your slave master, has to 
bow down to Christ. And anyway, so my point is that slavery has been a long institution and and Paul is not afraid of it. He brags that he is a slave of Christ Jesus. In one place in Paul's writings, he says, imitate me. So, and in another place in Paul's writings, he brags about uh, the freedom we have in Christ. How's that for a contradiction? And if you're going to study this God's word and understand what God has to say, one of the things that would be very, very helpful is to use the concordance to study this matter. Whatever topic you happen to be interested in, look up in the concordance everywhere where the, that word shows up. Even in the book of Romans here, you can find that the word slave is, is used as slave of God, slave of sin, slave of Christ Jesus, slaves of righteousness, the slavery of corruption, slaves to fear. So you look up the places where the word slave shows up and you come to a greater understanding of how these guys 2,000 years ago, especially Paul, our apostle, the apostle of the uncircumcision boys and girls, how he meant for these words to be understood. And so every Bible student should do at least a little bit of study using a concordance. Let's figure out what this word means and why it's important and to see if it has any depth or illumination for our souls. And so I'm saying that Paul, a slave of Christ Jesus, does have illumination. If he bragged that he was a slave, it must not be all bad to be a slave, okay? It's not all bad to take the trash out, wash the dishes. It can be a spiritual experience to take the trash out and wash the dishes and do menial tasks. We in America have been have our minds polluted with all this crap about get rich quick and think and grow rich and you know a little bit of Tony Robbins here and and Napoleon Hill there and, and you listen to, to the word of faith preachers like that uh, those nut jobs you know uh, Joel Osteen you know they they would have you believe that you need to you need a yacht if you're going to be a Christian and you know a Cape Cod split level with a lawn that needs mowing and you know a white picket fence and a two-car garage two and a half car garage by now okay so but Paul is bragging that he's a slave so this whole message starting from Romans if he's bragging that he's a slave, it has nothing to do with the wealth and prosperity gospel that we're so used to from the false Christian religion. Because they're so inclined to just ignore what Paul said. And if Paul is opening up with, I I'm a slave, I'm a slave of Christ Jesus, a called apostle, severed. You know, even the word severed feels like it's tied to the word slave, because if you're severed that means you're cut off from familiar things Paul was cut off from his glorious station as a huge Pharisee that demanded respect and had letters of mark in order to kill and imprison the Saints wherever he could find them Paul was severed and now he's a slave <clears throat> so um, let's see, looking over my notes here, see if I've missed anything. I think I've covered it all. It's just, just uh, some random thoughts about where we're going with Paul's evangel. He's a slave of Christ Jesus, I call the apostle, severed for the evangel of God. Cut off from everything he once knew. Everything. What is the evangel of God? It's something that he, that God promises before through his prophets and the Holy Scriptures and it's concerning his son who comes out of the seed of David according to the flesh who is designated son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection of the dead. By the res... Oh, there's one thing I wanted to tell you about this phrase here, the resurrection of the dead. The word dead actually in the Greek is plural 
but in English we don't have a easy peasy way to translate it into plural so the concordant boys just translated it, the resurrection of the dead but maybe it'd be better if they said the resurrection of the dead ones or the resurrection of all the dead I think all the dead is implied in the scriptures but it's just the word dead here and it is in Greek it's the plural word dead and since we in English idiom don't have a plural word dead we use dead for both plural and singular I just thought you might like to know that in fact in the concordant version they use three horizontal lines right above the first letter to indicate whether or not a word is plural they haven't done it this one slipped by in some in, in some future version of the concordant publication they're going to st put those three lines right before the the first d in dead so you'll know that it's plural anyway so read it that way according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection of all the dead ones how do the all the dead ones get resurrected they get resurrected by the spirit of holiness doesn't this sound beautiful and powerful and bigger than anything you can contribute to the whole program? The, the gospel, the evangel of God is concerning his son. It's not concerning you. It's not what you do with your free will to get in. It's concerning his son who comes of the seed of David. Whew. Okay, that's enough for now. Grace to you. And uh, leave me your thoughts about this because I'm telling you it's deep even even though supposedly if you get into Madame Guillaume and Witness Lee and the Word of Faith movement those guys pretend that they've got deep stuff going on but they don't tell you about the love that God had for his Christ and and what happened on the cross and all that it means they don't tell you that what was accomplished on the cross was the, the justification of all, the reconciliation of all, the salvation of all. No, all those guys are just, they're, it's like, what's in it for me? That's what the main gospel of Christianity, po popular false Christianity is all about. It's just, what's in it for me? But Paul was a slave, a slave of Christ Jesus, a called apostle, and he was cut off from many things for the evangel of God. Okay, grace to you.